Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's two weeks to go, or 14 days to go into your first GCSE maths paper, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. And today we're going to be focusing on the topics of density and pressure, so we're going to look at those compound measures topics. So we're going to look at density today and we're going to look at pressure today. In this video I'm going to go through each of them and I'm going to give you some questions to try yourself, so remember to press pause and to try those questions. So, let's get started. Hi, today we're going to look at density, and then after we look at density, we'll then look at pressure. So these are compound measures, and we've looked at speed, which is another compound measure. And with speed, remember it told us how far something travelled in a certain amount of time. So in terms of density, it tells us how heavy something is for a certain amount of volume. So for instance, how many grams one centimetre cubed would be, or how many kilograms one metre cubed would be, and so on. So we're going to be looking at density. So in terms of density, you could consider it in terms of how many grams per centimetre cubed, and so on, and consider it that way is it if you like remember when we looked at speed we considered how many miles per hour but also you can learn the formula the density is equal to the mass of an object divided by its volume and then you could rearrange this so then you can make volume the subject and get the volume is equal to the mass of the object divided by its density and the mass of the object is equal to its density multiplied by its volume so those are very useful the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume the volume is equal to the mass divided by the density and the mass is equal to density multiplied by volume so let's have a look at a question here we've got a piece of metal has got a volume of 50 centimeters cubed and a mass of 900 grams and we've been asked to calculate the density of the metal so in terms of this question, you could consider it in terms of, we know the mass of the metal is 900 grams and it's got a volume of 50 centimetres cubed. Well, in terms of the density, we want to find how heavy one centimetre cubed would be. So you could take the 900 grams and divide it by 50, and that'll tell us how heavy one centimetre cubed would be. So then we'd have its density, there's so many grams per centimetre cubed. Alternatively, we could write down this density. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So in terms of the density of the metal, the density would be equal to its mass, which is is 900 divided by its volume which is 50 and 900 divided by 50 is equal to 18 so that means the density of the metal would be 18 and in terms of our units would be grams per centimeter cubed so grams per centimeter cubed and that's the density of the metal 18 grams for every centimeter cubed and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at a question now for you to try. So we've got a piece of glass that's got a volume of 30 centimetres cubed and a mass of 75 grams. And we've been asked to calculate the density of the glass. So feel free to press pause now and work out the density of the glass. Okay, so in terms of density, the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. So in terms of the glass, the mass of the glass is 75 grams, so 75 divided by its volume, which is 30. And if we do 75 divided by 30, that's equal to 2.5. So that means the density of the glass is 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So each centimeter cubed of glass is 2.5 grams. And that's it, that's the density of the glass. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we've got a glass paperweight has got a mass of 420 grams. And the density of the glass that is used in that paperweight is 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So in other words, every centimeter cubed of this glass has got a mass of 2.5 grams. And the question says, find the volume of the paperweight. So feel free to press pause now and work out the volume of this paperweight. Okay, so we could approach this in a couple of different ways. So one way would be to look at the density, which says 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So it's saying that every centimeter cubed has got a mass of 2.5 grams. So if we divide 420 by 2.5, that'll tell us how many centimeter cubes there would be. Alternatively, we could know that the formula, the volume is equal to mass divided by density. And if we want to find the volume of this paperweight, we can just do its mass divided by its density. So its mass is 420 divided by its density, which is equal to 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed, or 2.5. And if we do 420 divided by 2.5, that's equal to 168 centimeters cubed. So the volume of the paperweight would be 168 centimeters cubed, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, Kylie's got a solid glass cube. So she's got a solid glass cube, so it's a glass cube, and it's a cube so it looks something like this so that's a cube it's a little sketch so she's got a solid glass cube and the length of each side of the cube is five centimeters so the width would be five centimeters the depth would be five centimeters the height would be five centimeters and so on and the density of the glass used is 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed so every single centimeter cubed of this glass has got a mass of 2.5 grams and the question says find the mass of the cube so feel free to press pause now and find the mass of this cube Okay, so if I want to find the mass of this cube, the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to find the volume of the cube. So the volume of the cube, the volume will be equal to the length times the width times the height. So it's going to be 5 times 5 times 5. And 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125 
centimeters cubed. Okay, so we now know the volume of the cube is 125 centimeters cubed. Now we know the density of the glass is 2.5 grams per centimeter cubed. That means that every single centimeter cube has got a mass of 2.5 grams. So if we take that 2.5 grams and we multiply it by 125 because we've got 125 centimeter cubes, that'll tell us the mass of the cube. And if we think about it, the mass of an object is equal to its density multiplied by its volume. So here we've got the mass is equal to its density multiplied by its volume. And if we do 2.5 multiplied by 125, that's equal to 312.5 grams. So that means the mass of this cube would be 312.5 grams. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So we've had a look at density. So remember, density is a measure of how heavy a certain amount of material is. So in this case, how many grams per centimeter cubed. So every centimeter cubed has got a mass of 2.5 grams. So that's its density. So in terms of density, density is equal to the mass of an object divided by its volume. We've got the volume is equal to the mass divided by its density. And the mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. And if you just learn one of these, you can rearrange it to get the others. Okay, so we've had a look at density. Now let's have a look at another one of our compound measures, which is pressure. And whenever a force is being applied over a particular area, if we do the force divided by the area, that will give us the pressure. And if we multiply both sides of this formula by area, we would get pressure multiplied by area is equal to force. So then that would give us force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. And then if we divide both sides by pressure, we can then find that the area is equal to force divided by pressure. So in other words, if we know a force is being applied, if we divide it by the area that which is being applied, that would tell us the pressure. If we multiply the pressure by the area, that will give us the force. And if we do the force divided by the pressure, that will tell us the area in which the force is being applied. And that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at a question. We're told that a box exerts a force of 7,200 newtons on a table. So there's a box on top of a table, and it's applying a force on the table of 7,200 newtons. And the area of the base of the box is 400 centimeters squared. So at the bottom of the box, the area of the bottom of the box is 400 centimeters squared. And we've been asked to work out the pressure on the table in newtons per centimeter squared. Okay, so feel free to press pause and try this question now. Now you can consider this by just considering the units as newtons per centimeter squared. So we want to find how many newtons are being applied on the table for each centimeter squared of area. So if we take the 7,200 and divide it by 400, that'll tell us how many newtons per centimeter squared. And then that'll tell us the pressure on the table. So you can just take the 7,200 and divide it by 400, and that'll tell us how many newtons per centimeter squared. Alternatively, we can actually know that the formula, the formula pressure is equal to force divided by area. And that means the pressure would be equal to the force, which is 7,200 divided by the area. And the area at the bottom of the box is 400 centimeters squared. So divided by 400. And that's equal to, is equal to 18. So that's going to be 18 newtons per centimeter squared. So that means the pressure is 18 newtons per centimeter squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we're told a box is placed on a floor. So we've got the floor and a box is placed on it. The area of the box in contact with the floor is 1.2 meters squared. So that means the bottom of the box has got an area of 1.2 meters squared. And we're told the pressure exerted on the floor is 2,800 newtons per meter squared. So for every meter squared, 2,800 newtons is applied. And we've been asked to work out the force exerted by the box on the floor. So we want the total force exerted by the box on the floor. So feel free to press pause now and work out the total force exerted by the box on the floor. Okay, so in terms of this question, well, we know that the area of the box in contact with the floor is 1.2 meters squared, and we know that every meter squared, 2,800 newtons is applied. So if we take the 2,800 and multiply it by 1.2, we can find the total force exerted by the box on the floor. Alternatively, we could learn that the force is equal to pressure multiplied by the area. So the pressure would be 2,800 multiplied by the area, which is 1.2. And if we do 2,800 multiplied by 1.2, that's equal to 3,360 newtons. And that's it. That's the force exerted by the box on the floor. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at density and we've looked at pressure. Now, with these two topics, I'd highly recommend the practice questions today because, for instance, with density, you could have questions where you've got to find the volume and then work out the mass of the object by using the density of the material it's made from. With pressure, it could be, for instance, it could be boxes on tables and so on, and you've got to work out the pressure exerted on a table and so on. But in terms of these topics, they're topics where the questions can change a bit, the situations can change or vary a bit. So I highly recommend the practice questions. I just give you some practice in terms of some of the typical scenarios so you're a bit more familiar with what you might encounter. So there's two weeks to go. Keep up the hard work. You're doing really, really well. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers. Bye.